first notice is this. We are revising the church electoral roll and uh, we have put a notice at the back which you'll see um, next to the, where the hymn books are about why we're revising. We do it every year before the annual meeting of our church. And for anybody who wishes to be part of our church electoral roll, which means uh, really being a, a, a paid up, not a paid up, but a member of our church who can vote in various elections and things at the annual meeting for church offices. Um, that's something that's worth being part of. It's, it's really a token of saying, I'm part of you and I want to be with you in, in, in all that goes on here. So if you'd like to take a form and think about it, they're at the back after the service. But uh, much more exciting is that it is Mothering Sunday and uh, Fiona Leathers has got these together with the help of uh, lots of daffodils from um, Elizabeth Fleming's house, um, Stonewall Park, which is glorious at this time of the year, if any of you know it. And uh, we thank you very much, Fiona, for doing that. Normally it's Carol Benton's job, but Carol's not able to be here today. The other good news is that the church wardens have been active. Now, I know this is a surprise for you, but, <laughs> but uh, Paul and Bob have been up doing the gutters and the lead work in the tower. And they've, they've sort of cracked it, really, with a special paint and everything to repair the cracks and everything. So thank you to Paul and to, to, to Bob, who are sitting in the congregation. Uh, it would have cost us many thousands of pounds. In fact, we have raised, through Helen Barnes here, um, uh, her inspiration, 5,000 pounds, which is in the Church Tower Repair Fund at the moment, to be paid out for the costs that it is incurring because of the damp and the leak and the wood and all that sort of stuff. So we're very thrilled that that has taken place and that our wardens have done a great job. Well, they do a great job anyway, but um, especially in that as well. Well, after all that, on this lovely day, Mothering Sunday, um, we're going to praise God by singing together number 371, Ye Holy Angels Bright, in the hymn book.
still through good or ill who ever lives. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's sit or kneel to pray and we take our great orders of service. We pray the prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, and on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolving to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with everyone. And we pray the first of the two prayers over the page. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand. special prayer for Mothering Sunday. O God of compassion, whose Son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. <coughs> Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please would you be seated for the reading from the Bible, from the Old Testament.
reading is taken from Exodus chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the, the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord.
the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to Christ our Saviour. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took the baby Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice in keeping with what it was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was in a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Well, as the readings remind us, today is Mothering Sunday, uh, the annual celebration of mothers throughout the world, and an opportunity for us to remember our own mothers and the mothers within our community and a, a time to thank God for their care and nurture of children. Actually, I think it ought to be a day, well, for me, it's a day which, when all women are celebrated uh, and uh, appreciated, not just mothers. Recently, Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe was released from imprisonment in Iran, and we remember her courage as a mother and we thank God that she's finally reunited with her daughter. But particularly today, we remember the courageous mothers of Ukraine, whether they're still in Ukraine or who have fled, fled to safely in another country with their children to protect them from the cruel invasion of their country by the forces of Vladimir Putin. And the first chapter of Exodus 
Well, the second chapter of Exodus that was uh, read to us today was preceded by chapter 1. And in chapter 1, towards the end, the cruel actions of another despotic leader, Pharaoh, the ruler of Egypt, who used the people of slave labor is mentioned. Pharaoh was afraid, afraid that the Israelites would become strong and multiply, and he, would, he was worried that they would revolt and attack him. So he gave an order. Every son that is born to the Hebrews should be thrown into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. However, as we're witnessing in the Ukraine today, it was the courage of the mothers and the midwives of the Hebrew people that challenged the action of the oppressive and cruel rule of Pharaoh. One mother was called Jochebed. Jochebed means the Lord is glorious. They've been saying glory to Ukraine, haven't they, in their, in their uh, interviews, the Ukrainians. Well, glory to God is what uh, Jochebed means. And uh, she was the mother of three children, Miriam, the oldest, then Aaron, and the youngest, the baby, not Charlotte, but Moses. Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. And despite knowing the risk that she was taking, it was Jochebed's maternal determination to save her son that ensured that Moses was spared an early death. You remember, she made a basket, made it waterproof, put the baby in, and put it in the Nile. Do you remember that Pharaoh had said, you must cast all the firstborn sons, uh, first, all the sons into the Nile? Well, she did that. But of course, Moses was floating in a basket. And we're thinking today the courage of Moses' older sister. Because when uh, Moses was there floating in his basket in the reeds on the edge of this huge river, the Nile, she was there watching over him to see what would happen. And we know that Pharaoh had many children. Rulers did in those days. If it was Ramesses II, they reckon he had about 60 daughters from the records that we have. So this was one of them. Anyway, this daughter of Pharaoh was coming down to the river to bathe, as they did in those days. And she saw this basket in the reeds and thought, what's, what's that? And sent out one of the servant girls to get it. And then she realized, probably because Moses was crying, as babies do when they're hungry, thought, oh, it's a baby. And you know, as the baby was crying, it says in the scripture that Pharaoh's daughter, the daughter of the Pharaoh who said you must kill off all the firstborn sons, all the, all the sons, felt sorry for him. Something in her heart was moved. And she said, oh, this is one of the Hebrew babies. And so she was looking at this baby and Miriam could obviously see in Pharaoh's daughter that her heart was compassionate towards her little brother. So she quickly went up and said, would you like somebody to nurse this baby for you? So she said yes, and of course got the child's mother to nurse the baby. And uh, a nice little touch in the scripture is that um, uh, I will pay you, uh, the Pharaoh's daughter said, for this service that she was offering. Anyway, the courage of a mother, the courage of an older sister, combined with the compassionate heart of Pharaoh's daughter, rescued not only the baby Moses, but of course, in the fullness of time, rescued the nation of Israel, the children of Israel. None of those three women could see the importance of what they did that day with courage, quick thinking, and compassion. 
because they didn't realize what an important role Moses the baby would play in the future. Well, we know from later on that Moses had a special place in God's plan for the Israelites. He grew up having the courage and the faith of his birth mother, Jochebed, and he had the compassion and the education of his adoptive mother, Pharaoh's daughter. And of course, he needed all those qualities to lead the Israelites through the wilderness for 40 years out of slavery in Egypt, facing danger and attacks from their enemies. But Moses also needed the maternal qualities that he inherited to deal with all the complaints and the grumbling of God's people. I'm not looking at anybody here. Uh, the people of Israel. Now, we, we know whether we have children or not, being a parent is both rewarding and demanding. It's a 24-7 job for life because even when you get to be grandparents, you're still parents to your children and still concerned with what's going on in their lives. And who knows what important role each child will have in the future. Who knows? Who knows whether they might be the parents of a future Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And however challenging children may seem at different stages of their lives, each one is precious and unique with their own personality and temperament and character and gifting and, I believe, calling from God. Now, I believe that it takes a whole village to raise a child. And a local church like us can play a part in that role of raising any of the children that come within our orbit. We all have a part to play, because it might be active engagement with families, being positive role models for the children, or perhaps praying for families. It's so good to see people in our community supporting families. And we saw a lot of that during the time of lockdown. Because when we offer support to each other, we all benefit. And it's wonderful to see how many people in many countries, including ours in the UK, are opening up their homes to welcome people from Ukraine and providing them with safe places to live. And who knows what benefits that will have both for the Ukrainian children as they grow up and also for the host families and the countries of those who are willing to take them in. You know, I'm struck by that verse in the Gospel reading from today. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined in other words, Simeon had a sense that God's hand was upon that particular little baby, just like Charlotte. And uh, who knows, of course, that little baby was Jesus. But actually, for all children, I believe that God has a plan and a purpose for them. So for the children within our circle of acquaintance, who knows what God will be doing in the coming years in their lives? What are they destined to become? You know, I'm grateful for the nurture of my own mother and for her faith that helped set me on the pathway for my life. So let's appreciate today afresh what a vital part women in general and mothers in particular play in enabling us all to become all that we can be. By the way, I don't know if you noticed in the reading that Fiona read to us, God was not mentioned once. And as we look at the story of Moses' early life, we can see that God was at work behind the scenes, but we can only see that in hindsight. And you know, I believe that God is at work behind the scenes in your life and in mine too. So let's be aware of that, to try to discern 
what God is about, what he's doing. Let's pray that we'll be able to trust him. I'm saying this to myself as much as to you and to cooperate with him in his work. Let us pray. Loving God, as a mother feeds her children at the breast, you feed us in the sacrament of Holy Communion with the food and drink of eternal life. Help us who have tasted your goodness to grow in grace within the household of faith and to play our part in the world as the people of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This often happens when I preach. We're going to stand now as we continue on with our order of service, turning to page three, as we stand and declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's sit or kneel now for our time of prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for the church and for the world. We live in dark times. As the war in Ukraine continues to unfold, and as the horrific toll of human suffering compounds, we think of those poor, desperate refugees fleeing from cities like Mariupol, now reduced to dust. What a desperate, pointless waste. What total disregard for everything your son Jesus stood for, with peace and love for others replaced by needless, wanton destruction, driven by absolute power and pointless pride. Today, we think of especially for the mothers of Ukraine and their children. What a world it is for these young people to be born into. Give them hope and courage to think positively despite the horror inflicted on them. May their plight spur us on to make room in our lives for those displaced by war. There is so much we can do here to make a difference. Let us reach out and share what we have to bring hope, joy, and peace to those who need it most. Lord, in your mercy, 
Today is Mothering Sunday. We pray for mothers everywhere. Bringing a child into the world is the most powerful and important pursuit there is. May the profile of motherhood, with its incredible emotional and physical demands, be properly acknowledged and respected for what is the most precious and essential gift of all, the prospect of new life and what it brings, hope and prosperity for the future. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, what we do in our current lives frames the world to come for future generations. Are we making the world a better or worse place? What does our current lifestyle mean for people who are just being born into the world today and for their children and their grandchildren? A light touch today is the fountain from which hope springs for tomorrow. Your world, Lord, is full of bounty. May we use today's celebration of motherhood to remind ourselves that sharing not just between ourselves, but between generations and those yet to come, is the fulcrum around which all our hopes and dreams are built. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, help us to appreciate all that is invisible. It's so easy to assume that what we see is all there is, but your creation tells us otherwise. Make us aware of what we can't see, from the wind in our hair, to the microbes that help us digest our food and recycle our waste. Day and night, 24 by seven, your self-sufficient world is adapting, renewing, healing, creating. The oxygen we breathe, on which we depend, is created by microscopic bacteria and invisible chloroplasts. Thank you, Lord, for them. The fermentation of the beer and the wine we love to consume, that is created by invisible yeast. So when we raise our glasses, we raise them to you, Lord, for this miraculous process. The overexcited electrons that power our lights, heat our homes, drive our trains, far too tiny to see. Thank you for them. Since the discovery of how electricity can be made to flow more than 150 years ago, the modern world has been transformed. Thank you, Lord, for our ability to harness the invisible laws of nature for the benefit of our personal comfort and well-being. May we use such discoveries wisely, and by appreciating the power of the invisible world, may we never think of anything as ordinary. Indeed, may the ubiquity of the extraordinary be our lifetime guarantee against taking anything in your creation for granted. For all this, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our communities here in the Chitting Stones. We pray especially for Lisa, Bill, Sally, and Carol for their ministry here. We pray for the sick, the elderly, and the lonely. Help us comfort them in their hours of need. And this week, we pray especially for Carol Benton, Nancy and Gerald Leggett, Philippa Edwards, Chloe Phillips, Ian Butters, Jane Evans, Walter Cairns, Scott Davis, and Rick Carroll. And from our Book of Remembrance, we pray on the 30th of March for Maisie Ellen Williams, on the 31st of March for Molly Langridge, and on the 1st of April for Grace Winter. Finally, Lord, on this special day, let us pray once again for mothers. May your light perpetual shine upon them and for the power of their love, commitment, and self-sacrifice. We thank you, Lord.
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, Chris, for your prayers. We're going to um, stand now because we're going to wish God's peace upon us. Would you stand, please? Since we are put right with God by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his undeserved but wonderful love. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Now, in the, uh, after the service, we're going to go across to the parish room, and there are various things on sale like books, and uh, various other things that we can use as a, um, we can pay our money as an offering which will be sent to the Ukraine. So that's after the service, so please feel free to join us there. Well, now we're going to sing our hymn during which the offering will be taken, 235, Come Down, O Love Divine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, 
which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh, and as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Now we give you thanks because you give us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace. As we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. sit or kneel to pray. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death upon the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we, offer, we bring before you this bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us to be in your presence to serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this bread and cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We're not worthy as much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Sadly, we are still in the days of COVID and we do not therefore share the cup together. It's just for the priest celebrant to partake, but we will all share in the bread and I'll just pop it into your hands without a word of administration so that none of my germs get transferred onto it. So may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for us, preserve us body and soul unto everlasting life. We eat this in remembrance that Christ died for us and we feed upon him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. In the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for us, preserve us, body and soul, unto everlasting life. We drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for us, and we are thankful. So let us draw near with faith, to receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for us, his blood which he shed for us, eating and drinking in remembrance that he died for us, feeding on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen.
Now, it's our final hymn that we're going to sing in just a second. Um, I wonder if I could have some volunteers, please, to take the flowers to give to each female person within our congregation, please, during this next hymn. Children would be most welcome, but uh, grown-ups will, will do as well. Thank you very much. So we're going to sing our final hymn now, and this time we're going to go for the Red Chiddingstone Hymn Book. The Red Chiddingstone Hymn Book, and we're going to sing number 33. And of course, when you sing it, you'll recognize that it's a version of the Magnificat, which Mary, Jesus' mother, sung as a hymn of praise to God when she realized she was going to give birth to Jesus. Let's stand to sing. We sit or kneel for our final prayers. And in our order of service on the final page, we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So just before the final blessing, Remember two things. One is that um, if you're thinking about becoming a member of our church, there are some electoral roll forms at the back on that side. Uh, uh, you'll find them there. 
like to take one, it'll explain to you on there what's required. And the other thing is, please do come back with us to the parish room for coffee and cake and also um, plants and books. And uh, we're going to send the proceeds uh, to the work of people who are helping in the Ukraine. In, sorry, in Ukraine. So our final prayer. May the peace of God so needed in our world, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.